is a very temporary type of art form. But despite it being around for some time now, it never really blows up so much that it stops being a novelty act. It pops up somewhere once in a while, in a talent show usually, and people lose their minds over it. But then the hype kind of fizzles out until the next time it pops up somewhere. I guess very few art forms end up being preserved by generations of people after the creator of the artwork anyway. But stand art, I think, is a much more literal reflection of our transience as a species. God told Adam, in the sweat of your face, you shall eat bread till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you shall return. I was in middle school when I first saw sand being manipulated on a light box. The sand manipulator was a girl called Shema al mughiri who wasn't much older than I was at the time. And live, a sand art performance can be truly hypnotic when it's done well. Anyway, here's a montage of my process leading up to my live performance. Spoiler alert, the show is a hit apparently. And the CEO of the company that held the event later asked if I saw that some of the guests had actually teared up. I said I couldn't see past the front row. I didn't have my glasses on. And it's always, I don't know, it's always a beautiful, scary, and strange thing to have someone tell you that something you made made them feel a certain way. It really is. And I'm grateful that I get to hide in the dark behind a large black box for most of the performance. Oh, and shout out to the musicians of Fushta Music Group who created the soundtrack to the sand story in such a short time. I never had live music with my performance before. That felt really fancy. Okay, cut to the montage. Put this in here. And then put the light source. Revealing the secrets of the trade and whatnot. Let's Make sure it's upright. Okay. Pepe. Oh, yeah, Pepe. Oh, what a pleasant surprise. She just woke up. How are you? Pepe, you good? Pepe, is there something you want to talk about? <laughs> is there something you want to talk about? Well, since Pepe clearly had nothing to say, I had to get back to work. I had to get this plugged in and get my light source on and have the glass on top of the sandbox. That's my least favorite part because I always fear I'm either going to shatter the glass or cut myself on it somehow on the edges. But I had to get done with that and then refer the storyboard that I had drawn and confirmed, gone through with the clients and practice it until I'm happy with it, basically, or at least semi-happy. taking breaks and switching off the light partly because I'm <laughs> feel like I need it and partly because the light is kind of volatile it gets overheats uh, a lot and then it might blow like the light might stop working that has happened before so I'm just taking breaks between my practice <laughs> I did my first full practice just now and I'm gonna do session two or session three actually because I gave up on session one and uh, my mom gave me this mask which is better than the scarf I was wearing it's going to protect me from the dust and the sand now and hopefully no more sneezing
The sun rose by the time I was done and I showed my mom my final rehearsal in my house and the fact that she liked it really, I don't know, made me feel a bit more confident about what I was gonna do and yeah, better about the whole thing. And on my way there, I took a few notes that I wanted to have in mind while I was performing and doing my final rehearsals in the venue itself at Sheraton. And I, these are just things that I wanted to keep at the top of my head and little things, little details that I wanted to remember while performing. And Sheraton is basically, it's a place that you don't really just casually go to, you know, it's really hard to get to unless you have a car. So, or at least to me as someone who doesn't walk a lot, it's somewhere that it's not really easy to access. But yeah, I took a ride there and went through security and got all my stuff in there. And I had to unpack everything that was kind of hard to do because you see, this is all of it dismembered, but then we had to put it back together. And I was really happy with how they prepared the filming, you know, the camera at this angle that would make it very good at like you know it would be very clear on the screen and i think i'm going to be copying the setup for later shows i was really happy that they had this ready and the whole thing wasn't going to be just my sand performance you're preparing for the bigger event for everything else going on so i just took a few clips of behind the scenes and i went to a bookstore after that inside sheraton saw the books a lot of chimamanda books i saw some uh, of the other events going on at sheraton and went through my to-do list most of it is ticked off and I drew a lamp that I saw there. It reminded me of the Reddit story about the lamp that this guy told. And there seemed to be, these people in front of me seemed to be talking about something important. But yeah, I couldn't really get the gist of it. And then I took a video of this little miniature model. And I wondered whether I can make this, like recreate some or create something like this if I had like a laser cutting machine. And I wanted to know who made it. So I took a picture of that and tried to look them up and yeah i couldn't really find many results and this is basically right before the show they weren't really letting people in while they were doing the final preparation and i wanted to do a few rehearsals at this point so i did that and then i drew the names of some of the staff and some of the people at in attendance who asked and we took pictures of that and i sent it to them but most of the time i was yeah kind of hiding this is a painting i saw near the washroom the which I liked and this is my name and the name of the music group the talented musicians who did the live music while I was performing with sand and oh yeah and I found a tiny hiding spot in Sheraton where they change their clothes and they rehearse or like they talk a little bit rest between shows I somehow pushed around the stack of chairs and managed to have a little cubicle <laughs> it's not a cubicle really it's a little just a spot in the middle of all these stacked chairs where i hid and my sister compared it to like a final destination scenario she was like what if one of these stacks of chairs falls on you and you know it's just this is right after the show and i had to wait until the end of the show to be able to take my equipment and go home and as you can see by this point i'm a little overwhelmed and <laughs> Yeah, the hiding and stuff I couldn't do forever, but yeah, I I tend to get overwhelmed quite easily, especially when it's a long event. And I had dinner over there, which is hasn't changed from the last time I ate at Sheraton, but I had these delicious olives. I stacked up the olives from the salad in the buffet and yeah, really enjoyed those. Later on, I took uh, I had to pack up and you know, take all the sand, put it in a kit. My mom really helped with preparing a kit that would make it easy to pack up quickly and go home. And I met a few people who said they were fans of my work and saw my work on Ghana and like other channels. And so we took pictures. She's called Aiden and he's a friend. And uh, that was a nice way to wrap up the day. So yeah.